Okay, so do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. I'm Martin Stebbing. Genuine Martin. Martin Stebbing. So you come in and so technically you have a meter, right? Yeah. And uh, what do you put at the meter level first? Do you put the vocal on the meter level or do you put the bass I, and drums? I normally just work on the bass and drums first. Yeah, rather than using me, I, yeah, I like to start off with the kick, or the, the kick drum and then the bass and add the drums in. Start off with the drums. You've got to have a solid foundation to, uh, you know, build the house on if you don't, you know, that's the, the rhythm section is the foundation. So, bass and drums, and then I like to uh, bring up the vocal and listen to the vocal and see how that fits dynamically into the song and, and also helps me just know where the melody of the song is going to go. But then I'll try and get the bass and drums to be sitting nicely so as to like drive in the rhythm, but not too hard depending on the song. And then I'll bring in um, the guitars because they're <clears throat> the next thing up in the spectrum, you know, they're nice and midi uh, in the in the low mid range. And then keyboards generally come up a little further. Keep adding stuff as we're building up the, the mix and trying to make things they sit together nicely and draw a, a picture you know from in the stereo field so you know you can hear clearly the Mr. Guitarist on this side and Mr. Lead Guitarist is over here a bit and then I'll hang the horns in there and, and you know make them sit in the sound stage kind of where I'd imagine them to be during a performance um, for here you start out with a 10 dB head you yes start yeah I start off with a chunk of headroom um, and the bass uh, uh, on the bass and, and the drums I like to make sure I got like plenty of headroom on my final mix, you know, my my main stereo mix. The actual channel itself I'm not too bothered about because I've got faders and I can increase the volume there. I just want to make sure it's not clipping. So you leave yourself about 10 dB headroom yeah. you, after you do the bass and the drums. Yeah, bass, the drums meters, and vocals. You're, you're kinda, but you're using your ears more than the meters. Exactly, yeah, because ears are more, you know, at the end of the day, that's how you you got to mix it is with ears. If you try and mix to meters, it's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, but I try and leave as much room so as I start adding more instruments, I'm not running out of room and it's not getting all messed up and, and, and scrunched together. You know, I try and leave as many holes as possible in the spectrum. You know, it's not all about having maximum volume. One of the problems that with, uh, I find with a lot of modern mixes is that people mix everything loud. So it's loud. Everything's loud. There's no subtlety to it. So leaving some holes in the, you know, like a little bit of dynamic range. So yeah, there's a little bit of space there in between the instruments. Or panning is another key thing, you know, like putting things in the picture so there's plenty of space. You're drawing, you know, just think of your left and right as being part of a picture. You, if you can imagine, um, you know, a great painting, it's not all about the action, the main figure, it's about the stuff around them, and that's the same thing with music for me when I'm mixing, I try and, you know, paint a picture. That's one of the biggest defenders in mixing, is people, um, especially newer guys who haven't got a lot of experience, they tend to get their static mix, and a static mix is, you know, where you've got, you got your general balance, the faders are kind of where you want them to be, and everything's kind of just, you know, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the ballpark. And then they go, yeah, I need to turn the guitar up. So they turn the guitar up, and of course when they turn the guitar up, all of a sudden the bass line is now kind of buried a little bit. So instead of turning stuff up constantly, you know, they keep going from instrument to instrument. Like turn up the guitar, that means you've got to turn up the bass. You turn the bass up, means you've got to turn the drums up. Turn the drums up, you've got to turn the vocal up. So you just keep turning up and up and up and up, and then you're going to run out of room, and your mix is going to sound all dense and crappy. But a much better technique is to listen to your mix and go, okay, I can't hear the guitar too well on this bit. What's in the way of it? Turn that down. Don't turn, it's not what you turn up in the mix, it's what you turn down is what makes the mix great. Which is something that I think is, doesn't get done too much anymore. People just turn stuff up and then when you listen to the songs, like it's just, just smacked. There's no dynamic range in it. And if you listen to all the classic old songs, <clears throat> That's what they would do is would have what they used to call features, you know, have a featured moment where you turn other stuff down around it. <clears throat> so it has a moment to breathe and then you bring the other stuff back up again. So you're not constantly pushing stuff up into that upper range. And then it's all loud and horrible. Okay. And I think it was Bob Dylan who said the trouble is with modern music is that they just try and put too much sound in there. 
I think it's something like that, and it just tickled me pink because he's absolutely right. It's just like you listen to most pop records on the radio now, they might have a minimum of instrument instrumentation. And then they just turn everything up really, really loud. <laughs> really, really loud. It's loud from the first beat to the last beat. It just uh, there's nothing in between. There's no emotion to it, no swing, no nothing. Can you just give a uh, quick uh, tip on compressing? What do you compress? What do you do? You, uh, you pretty much compress everything as you can, or uh, I don't like to use like single great big gobs of compression. Like some people do, you can hear that again. That's very much a signature of modern mixing technique. It's the lazy man's way out. I'd rather use automation. But what I do do is I use little bits of compression all over the place. A little bit here, a little bit there. I might have, you know, a, one channel set up for the vocal where I've got a nice soft compression going on for the verses because it's nice and dynamic. But when it comes to the big chorus, you want something a little bit harder just to keep, so I'll switch over to another track or switch another compressor in. So you have a different effect for the chorus to make it maybe jump more, jump out the mix a little more. But I don't, I try not to use too much compression. I, um, you know, there's there's lots of different styles of compression too. There's not, I mean, you know, there's upwards compression, downwards compression, sideways compression, side chain <laughs> compression, all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, inline dual compression. Um, it depends. Depends on the song. You know. All right. What about EQ? EQ is the same thing as mixing. Don't boost cut. It's so old school. Don't boost cut. There should be no. There, and the worst thing that they ever put in EQs was the ability to boost stuff. Cut all the time. It, when you use EQ and you turn and you start boosting frequencies, you're dragging along a whole bunch of other crap with it that you don't really want to be messing with. Whereas if you can just find a way of cutting to make the things that you want stand out, cut. Go ahead and cut. EQ, I try to. I, I don't use too much of it. Again, if it's well recorded, you know, more and more these days, people come to me with pre-recorded stuff, and I don't really have a lot of option because I couldn't choose the mic, or I couldn't be there to place it, or choose the right preamp or whatever. So I do end up having to do quite a lot there. But I, if it's my own stuff that I've recorded, I try not to boost at all. You're just boosting noise. You're distorting. It's just. You know, of course, if it needs it, then do so. But you're generally better off to cut. Cutting is your best way of doing everything. Yeah, and let's not talk about gates because gates suck. Okay, gates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to use much in the way of effects. Uh, if it's a, something I'm recording, I will try and get room. Uh, use the room to get reverb sounds with by placing a mic somewhere distant, and that goes for vocals as well as drums and guitars. I'll have, you know, I'll set the drums up but then find a nice place for a room mic and it could be in the most bizarre spot. I mean, there's one of my favorite sound, room sounds I ever got was uh, it was a, a, a microphone in a cardboard box in the corner of the room going through a space echo <laughs> and then being smashed to hell with an 1176 compressor and then to tape and it sounded awesome when I brought it up with the rest of the drum kit made it sound like John Bonham fantastic sweet um, and I do the same thing with vocals I might I might have a really nice vocal mic hung up in front of the singer's face and then put something somewhere else in the room to get some reverb uh, and this is probably giving away a little secret this is actually a big one I'm giving I'm going to give you a big one here what I've done uh, with some stuff is that uh, you know I think this is weird have the really nice microphone set up and then on the mic stand I'll hang a baby monitor you know those things that you put in your baby's crib yeah. and they wake up and, they go, and then you hear them in the living room those things are insanely just brilliant because they have this horrible average gain compressor in there which makes everything loud so if you hang it on the mic stand and then you take the receiver and you have to mod it a little bit and get an output run it for a DI run it to tape next to the real thing when you blend those things together it's like having the most amazing gnarly compressor it's like totally Joe Meek old school just it's super lo-fi and you mix it in with the super hi-fi recording and you'll find that you don't use so much compression because this thing has this ability just to make things sound really just <laughs> crunchy and in your face it's a great effect I use that quite a lot huh. And nobody knows I'm doing it. 
because I'll just hang it out there. I think it's some kind of, I don't know, something just so we can talk to each other. No, it's, it's not at all. It's for me to make crazy vocal sounds. <laughs> so that's a good one out there, kids. <laughs> Go and raid your baby brother's uh, little baby mm. monitor thing. Listen quietly. Seriously. This is like, this is one of the biggest things that just drives me crazy when you see new guys come, you know, like, they come in and they crank the volumes up to 11 and up there it's loud all the time and after half an hour of listening to their stuff really loud, they're completely deaf and then they spend the rest of the day just like trying to work out why their stuff sounds like crap. Whereas if they just listened at a sensible conversational level with a pair of speakers they really know or two pairs of speakers some good and some bad then they would know where their mix is so much better I very rarely touch the volume control unless there's just something I really you know I want to hear how it sounds when it's cranked I'll do that for a couple of seconds but generally I don't touch the volume knob all day and it's like you could talk over it and it, it just means that you you've got a constant you know how your speakers sound you're not wearing your ears out you know, listen at a sensible level. It's that's number one. Yeah. Listen, yeah. And don't do drugs. Drugs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, any right. tips? Any other tips? Right. What else should we, should we do? Can you um, think of anything? I could play some spoons now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. That's that's way more than I enough. I know you're going to be editing that. Forever. I know. <laughs> I am. Thaddeus Falls mixer. I know all their dirty secrets. Those bum notes, those blue notes, the brown ones, the pink ones too. I'm the guy who fixes them all. He hates it when I fix stuff. He's always saying, don't fix it, but I fix it anyway. That's what I do, I'm the fixer. I am the butler of audio. But you gotta check them out, they're a great band. You're gonna love it. And a strange bunch of freaks at the same time too. It's very cool. Definitely get on iTunes and uh, Check, check out Thaddeus Full of iTunes. Amazon MP3 and Amazon On Demand. There's lots up there. There's a whole album of stuff. <laughs>